Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional live bonus video. If you hit that bell icon it will let you know when I post a new video or when I go live. So that way you won't miss out on any of the fun. Today we're going to talk about how to contour in design space and we're actually going to use a design space file to contour and make this super fun sign. This sign was originally just where you see the white, which is actually glow in the dark, and I will show you this glowing. It's really cute when it glows. Um, so what I did was I added all that StarCraft, and hopefully you guys can see that sparkle because it's really pretty, but I added that into the potion bottles and then also into our cauldron, and I'm going to show you guys how easily you can do that just to spice up some of your designs and some of the things that Design Space offers. So let's head over to Design Space, and I'll show you how to do it. In Design Space, the first thing that we're going to do is go into, I believe it was under Images, and I think I just searched Halloween, and I believe that's where I found it, but if we don't find it there, we may be able to just put in Pick Your Poison. Sometimes it's hard to find things in Design Space. It's best to use the fewest words possible when you're looking for something in Design Space because for whatever reason, it's not quite like Google where you can type in a whole phrase and it'll give you lots and lots of options. It's only going to give you very few if you put too many words in. And I'm pretty sure that I had just looked under Halloween when I was trying to find something fun to do with some of this glow-in-the-dark adhesive vinyl. There is a lot of really fun things that they have in here for Halloween. I love these letters. I thought these were really fun. And I do want to still play with those. And I don't know what I want to do with them yet. But I've seen a lot of people using them. And they're really, really cute on your projects. But I'm pretty sure it was below these letters. Because I did scroll for a little while before I found it. There it is. See, I knew it existed. So there's two different options. So there's this one, which is a single line. This one would be more for drawing or for engraving. And then this one is more for like cutting because it's got thicker lines. So we're going to insert that image. And it's going to show up over here in our design space. Now I'm going to keep it um, over in this corner really quick just for a minute. Because what we're going to do, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, is we are going to duplicate it first. And what I do is I duplicate it and then I'm going to move it all the way over here because we want to be able to see when we contour it and the contour gets in the way because it opens in the middle of the screen and then you can't actually see it and it's kind of a pain. So the first thing that we're going to contour out is going to be where the green is going to go, which is this little round part in the bottle and then in this portion right here, this kind of slime looking spot. So an easy way to do this is I will click hide all contours and just see what happens first. And we want to make this smaller so you can see the entire design in your uh, screen. So we want to make sure that we get rid of like this guy because we don't need him. And sometimes if you have issues getting rid of pieces and parts, you can just slice them out. Like certain things were giving me some trouble with this the first time I did it. And you'll see... With this one especially, there's like parts that when you want to click them, it won't let you. So like you have the outline of the cauldron, which it does not like and it does not want me to click it. So sometimes you can come over here and find that outline, but this one's really weirdly set up. So I did have to do this one just a little funny. So what I'm going to do is I just want this inside portion and then I would really like to get rid of all this cauldron, but I just don't think it's going to let me do it. So I may just need to slice it because you'll see what it's doing. Like it's, it won't let me select the outline. And then when I select the outline, it wants to kind of keep everything. Oh, it's actually going to let me do it. Okay. So we only have one last piece. So sometimes you just have to play around with your design a little bit so that you can get it to do what you want it to do. And it can be a little bit tricky. So this is going to be our green portion. So we can get rid of our contour now. And what we're going to do is change this to the green color just so we can keep an eye on what we're doing and not get confused. And then I'm just going to move it over here. Now I will preface this with I did have a bit of an issue um, with my first contour that I did because I did make this before I decided to show you guys how to do this because it was just so cute I wanted you guys to see. So you'll notice when I go to put it together my green isn't quite right and then there's going to be some of the parts in the bottles that aren't going to be quite right but I'm hoping that this will go smoother this time. So what we're going to need to do now is duplicate it again because now we want to get the inside of the center bottle. So we're going to hit contour again. 
And like I said, a lot of times the easiest thing to do is to click hide all contours. So we're going to go ahead and make this small again. And we're going to just hide all contour. And you'll see that this comes back, the cauldron. It just does this. I don't know why. It drives me bonkers. But we're just going to get rid of it. We'll just slice it out because we really don't need it. But all we need is the center piece. So I'm going to show you how to kind of correct it if it won't go away. So we really don't need the cauldron. So what we can do is just take a shape. I'm going to take a square. And all I'm going to do is just place my square right over the one that we contoured for the purple part. I believe it's purple. And we're going to slice this out. And then you can just delete everything that's right here. So you can delete the cauldron, the square, and everything. And then this is going to be your purple. And please, if it's wrong, I'm sorry. I don't remember what color order I did them in, but I do believe this one was purple. Just set that there. We're going to contour this one more time. So we're going to click Duplicate again. We're going to move this over to the side. This one's going to be a little bit tougher to see. And we're going to click on Contour again. And again, you're going to make it small so you can see the whole thing in your screen. And I made it way too small. And then, again, hide all contours. If we, Again, if you don't want to mess with this darn cauldron and try to get rid of it, you really don't have to. It can be an absolute, just absolute pain. You see that it doesn't want to play nice. You have to kind of play around where you're clicking. It doesn't always click in the same spot. But you can see I'm clicking this and nothing's happening, so we may just leave it. It's fine. So now we want to get this center piece here, and you'll see kind of how it turns like you'll see how they kind of shade a little bit when you are hovering where you can click on them. And we're going to make sure that these dots don't get contoured out of it because it's just easier. But again, we have the same issue with the square, with that little line. So I'm just going to slice it out. You don't always have to do this. And sometimes you don't want to, but it's just easier sometimes when it design space doesn't want to work. And so we're going to go ahead and just delete that. And that'll leave us with just this little part which we are going to make orange. And I just make them these colors partially so that I can kind of remember what I need to cut and where I need to cut it. So here's another little quick tip for you. The green part is still attached to itself and you can't ungroup it because it thinks it's all one image. But if you don't want to waste all this vinyl because you really don't need to use, um, you don't need these to stay like connected. It's really easy to line this one up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a shape. I'm just going to use a square and it's going to go right on top of that slime. We're going to slice it out. And what I want to do is get rid of the square and then the gray slime because now you can move the slime individually from your green in your bottle. So we're going to click on make it and I will res I would resize this to fit. Um, mine. So let me do that real quick so you guys can maybe see it's a little small. So you'll resize the whole thing to whatever size you need it to be. I believe mine was about mm, 10 tall. So we'll just set, do 10 tall. That's fine. And don't worry that these aren't lining up fully on your computer. That's fine. You'll line them up on your sign. So here is the part we're going to cut and glow in the dark. Keep in mind glow in the dark may need to be cut at a higher pressure. It is recommended for light cardstock uh, more pressure, but do a test cut if you haven't cut it before because sometimes it doesn't always want to work. Here is our orange, and you can see we just need a little piece of orange. So these are great for scraps, and we're using the StarCraft Magic Deceit line. And remember I told you I didn't want to waste all that vinyl? Well, this is how I saved some of that vinyl by not having the, or the green cut so far apart. And then here is our little purple part. So all we have to do now is cut everything out, which I will do off camera, and then we'll weed it and apply it to the sign. one a little bit differently in the way that we're going to layer it because of the way I have it set up and it's going to be a little tough to layer on the actual chalkboard so what I'm going to do is take a little piece of transfer tape and it doesn't have to be very big because I'm going to just do these little innards first um, and this one I'm actually going to pull off the 
uh, little dots and put them directly onto that because the, for whatever reason, the glow in the dark and I are not getting along right now. So we are going to just do this in kind of a strange way, but it, it's the way that will work for this easiest. So honestly, a lot of times it's just a matter of playing with things and figuring out what works best for you and how it's easiest for you. But I wanted to show you just kind of an alternate way to layer. And because these are such small pieces, these are going to be super easy. So we can just set them right inside of this. And we don't even necessarily need to use the transfer tape on these, but I'm going to just to make life easier. Now this one, I got to make sure I get it facing the right way. So this one might be a little more intense because it's a little bit tougher. I don't think it's exactly the same both ways. It's hard to tell. So we'll just, we might have to play with this purple one a little bit more, but we'll see if we can just easily fit it right in there. See what I mean? The, the glow in the dark just wants to stick and come off and it's just being kind of difficult. So I'm going to cut this transfer tape really, really small because I don't want to pull up the glow in the dark. And you know what? And I think this one ended up being bigger than that one. So that plan isn't going to work. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do this in another kind of odd way. I'm going to pick up the middle of this with a little piece of transfer tape. There's totally easier ways to do this, but when you screw up, you got to kind of mess with it and get it to work. So what I'm going to end up doing this way now is I picked up that piece of glow in the dark and I'm just going to put it over the purple. And I just got to make sure I get the purple the right direction because like I said, they're not the same. It's not exactly the same every way. And the purple might have a little edge to it, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is take both pieces and put them back into the potion bottle. This guy, I think we're going to end up with that same problem. So it's actually going to work out because I needed to get those dots on top of him anyways. So we are just going to pull out the center of the potion bottle. Not super hard to do. It's pretty easy, really, when it comes down to it, because the glow in the dark really did not want to stick to the um, backing for whatever reason this time. Usually I don't have quite as much trouble with it, but this time it just was being a real pain and it was kind of sad. All right. So now we'll just do the same thing that we did with the purple. And we're going to go ahead and put this right back in. And there we go. There's that. Now, the green slime, I think we're going to have a problem with because, again, I think it's bigger than this. I contoured. It didn't contour correctly. Such a pain. But what we'll do is we're going to transfer tape it, and we'll just have to make it work somehow we may be able to do it a little bit like when we do the um, hinge method. I'm going to be able to hopefully slide this under and line it up is my plan. So we'll see. But there's that part. Again, it, this is proof that no one is perfect. Mistakes happen. There was nothing I could do about it. I don't know why my contour hates me. If anybody else has issues with the contour, by all means, let me know because I sometimes think it's just me and it literally just hates me. So now all I'm going to do is lay this down on my transfer tape. Because this isn't a super solid piece, this is pretty easy as far as cutting your transfer tape and laying it on your transfer tape. It's not anything too crazy. I'm going to save this little chunk. I usually just, when I have these little bits and pieces, I'll just save them and wrap them back around the transfer tape. So we're putting this on this chalkboard, which ironically is a Target one, but I don't like this side of it, so we're going to use the blank side of it. And we're going to put this right on here, and I think it's going to look really cute. But what we're going to do is use the hinge method to do this, and because it's A, kind of long, and B, got to try to figure out how to slide that green under there. So what I have is some painter's tape. I've shown you guys the hinge method before. But I really like it for doing some of these larger decals. It helps you keep them straight and even. And it's also a really easy way 
to apply them and it helps keep the bubbles off which is really nice. My painter's tape's a little bit thick right now so we're gonna cut it kind of in half. I just ripped it a little bit but that it works. Painter's tape is the best for this because it holds really well but doesn't damage your project. So we are going to figure out and kind of eyeball about where we think straight and even is. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna go with this. So the first thing that I have to do is take my green and get it off of the backing because I'm going to have to slide it under this guy, which is not going to be a good time, but we're going to do it. We'll make it work. So what we're going to do is lift him up and I am going to take my green and figure out where he goes based on where my cauldron falls. And this may not actually be exactly perfect because it wanted to be difficult. But here's the other nice thing. I have these lines in here, and I know you can't see them, but there are like indents for where the cauldron was and where it cut. So I'm actually going to use those. So again, this will probably not be 100% perfect, but it'll be gosh darn close. So because I'm trying to push this back onto the, the backing, it's really tough to do because it doesn't want to stay on there. So you're going to have to help it along if you have to do something like this. But I think that's pretty darn close. If not, it's close enough. So we'll just, what I'm going to do is just fold this right back down on it. It's close enough. And do that. Okay, it should pick up both pieces now. So now what we can do is cut the backing off down here. And normally I like to do this with more solid designs. This design being super not solid, didn't really need the hinge method, but I'm glad I did it because obviously I had to fix a little screw up there with the sizing, which no big deal, it's totally fine. This is a sign for me, so if it's not perfect, I don't really care. <laughs> it's close enough. Okay, so we're gonna pull that off, we're gonna slide it around, we're gonna pull off our painter's tape. And simple as that this extra piece of and then what we're gonna do is lift this up and pull this back all the while being careful that everything is coming off of the backing and we have to be a little bit careful because up here we've got that transfer tape that's sitting there so you need to make sure that that lays down okay everything is laid down we are going to squeegee and we're gonna make sure everything sticks to our chalkboard. I will say chalkboard, not always the easiest to get things to stick to. So, that being said, we'll do our best. And then we just pull our transfer tape. Again, chalkboard, not super easy. So you're just gonna pull it really slow. And then you're gonna have these extra pieces right here from where you did the StarCraft. So we're gonna just make sure we peel those off as well. And we want to make sure that those polka dots stay on there. I'm going to grab this one. This is for the purple. And then we'll get the green one. The green, oddly enough, is the only one that came out perfect. And I don't know what was up with my um, contour. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it's just a pain. So welcome to Design Space, where it doesn't always work. But I think this came out really super cute. I really love it. I like that it's glow in the dark, which is gonna be super fun at night. Look at how cute that is. I think that came out awesome. Now, this is, again, a design space file. I showed you guys how to contour out the pieces. You may wanna just triple check them before you make your sign because occasionally they may not be perfectly sized, as you saw. I don't think it's really noticeable, which is super nice. And this was pretty easy to do even though we had to kind of mess around with some of the contouring. But it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you guys had fun learning how to use contour in Design Space and playing with some Glow in the Dark HTV. Check it out. So fun. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon. That will alert you to when I post a new video. Have a great day. Happy crafting.